Thank you. I'm Mr. Lehner and welcome back to Mr. Lehner's Math Extravaganza. As we start Investigation 2 in our CMP3 unit, and we're going to work specifically with common multiples, common factors, and when we're going to actually have to use these. So I know your favorite question is, when are we ever going to have to use this stuff in real life? Well, we're going to show you some examples of where you can use these things in real life, even as a sixth grader. So let's not waste any more time. Let's take a look at this problem. Mr. Lehner's ice cream shop is open for 24 hours. Again, I love food. Gotta, gotta get that food in there a little bit. Mr. Lehner wants to divide the day into work shifts that are equal. What are some of the ways he can divide the hours up evenly? So let's take a look at what we know so far. I know that the shop is open for 24 hours. I know that Mr. Lehner wants to divide the day into shifts that are equal. So let's imagine that there's whoever is working there, they're gonna be working for a duration that's going to be equal uh, to someone else. And I'm trying to figure out what are the different ways that I can actually divide these out. Well, I kind of have to think to myself, well, what type of math am I going to use to solve this problem? Do I need multiples? Do I need factors? How can I work this problem out? Well, I know when dividing things up evenly, one of the things I can decide to use might be factor pairs. Well, how do factor pairs help us out? Let's take a look. I can divide up these using the factor pairs of 4, 24, some start 24 hours in a day. I can do 1 and 24, 24 and 1, 2 and 12, 12 and 2, 3 and 8, 8 and 3, 4 and 6, and 6 and 4. Okay, what does that mean? That's great, Mr. Lehner. You gave me the factor pairs of 24. I don't know what those numbers mean. Well, this means, for example, I can have two workers that could work uh, a 12 hour shift, or 12 workers could work two hour shifts. So let's think. If I have two workers and one works 12 hours and the other one works 12 hours, well, that's two workers working equal shifts that equal 24. Okay. Or I can have 12 workers each working two hour shifts and that's still going to equal 24 and I've divided my day up equally. Um, so for each factor pair, it can be used to divide up the day evenly. Now, the one thing I probably don't want to do would probably be that first one. If I have one worker working 24 hours long, ooh, I know I wouldn't want to do it. I'd probably get pretty tired of scooping up ice cream for 24 hours straight. Uh, but Three workers working eight hours, eight hours working three hours, eight hours working three hours. Eight workers working three hours, four workers working six hours, and six workers working four hours. So again, I'm using my factor pairs to figure out how to set up my hours evenly. So maybe when you get older, you might become a manager, you might have to divide up hours for your workers. You're gonna use factor pairs and you might think like, hey, Mr. Lanier told me way back in sixth grade I might need to use this. Or you might say, yeah, I'm never gonna use that again. But you won't know until you try it. So, Let's have you try one uh, at home here. It says the hazel green lunchroom serves pizza every sixth day and chicken every eighth day. If today is the day they are served uh, together, when will they both be served together next? So imagine you go to the lunchroom today, they are serving pizza and chicken today. I wanna know when's the next time these two will be served in the same day again. So I know you got your paper ready, I know the pencil's out there. Go ahead and pause the video and we'll see what you come up with. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, you might have noticed something in this one. Did I throw a curveball? Did I trick you guys at home? I worked with factor pairs in the first question. What did I use here? Oh, I had to use multiples. So even though I talked about factors in the whole first problem, we're going to use multiples. We have to determine when, it pro when is it appropriate to use factors in multiples. So I knew that the chicken, or sorry, the pizza was served in the sixth day, and the chicken was served in the eighth day. So let's start now. In another six days, they're going to serve pizza. In another 12 days, it'll be a pizza day. 18th will be a pizza day. The 24th will be a pizza day. Let's think about chicken. Chicken will be served in the 8th day. Chicken will be served in the 16th day. It'll be served in the 24th day. Ooh, what did I just hit? What do we call that? Man, you guys are smart out there. Yeah, this is a common multiple. And actually, it's the LCM, which stands for least common multiple. Very good. So our least common multiple is 24. So using common multiples, I can tell that it will take another 24 days before both pizza and chicken are served in the same day. So if you get lunch here at Hazelwood, you might know and see, you know, how often do they serve pizza? How often do they serve, you know, like applesauce or chicken nuggets, whatever it is that's there, you can actually figure out when they will both be served on the same day next. And again, using common multiples. Thank you for tuning in, Mr. Anderson. As always, We'll see you next time.